umbrellas, raincoats and plenty of mud. The mood was somber at this year's Festival of Humanity and not just because of a bad weather. France's main left-wing parties and their supporters have been meeting outside Paris to discuss an alternative route to the direction taken by the socialist government. Recent surveys show a rise in the approval ratings of extreme right-wing party at the expense of the left. Putting the social back into socialism. This was top of the agenda at this year's gathering of left-wing parties, where organizers attempted to reassure their supporters, disillusioned with the socialist government and worried by the rise of the extreme right party. Wealth distribution's never been more unequal. That's something the left should condemn. A left which doesn't accept policies that infringe on workers' rights, or which raise their pension contributions and freeze their salaries. A left that doesn't allow public services to be put into financial difficulty, and which doesn't accept austerity, such as plans to cut public spending. Many had hoped the arrival of a socialist government would lead to a more caring society. But tax rises aimed at reducing France's high public debt have sent businesses abroad, costing the country much-needed jobs. And many feel today they are paying too much tax. It's always us who have to pay. Every time there is a financial crisis, it's always the most vulnerable members of society who must pay. He promised many things, but at the end he hasn't helped those most in need. Francois Hollande has taken risks to reform labour laws in a bid to boost competition. And he now wants to reform the indebted pension system urging the population to pay more and for longer. I don't think people voted for François Hollande to have their retirement age rolled back once again, nor did they vote for him to hear that the only solution is austerity and that social progress is no longer possible. Amid growing discontent, the popularity of the National Front has gone up, with a former Prime Minister even suggesting that voters could choose a far-right candidate in upcoming local elections if they were less sectarian than their socialist rival. When we see the shameful comments of former Prime Minister François Fillon to abandon the policy of blocking the extreme right, we see that a wall has been broken and this should be a warning to the left. The National Front is no longer perceived as an outcast and polls suggest it's become a party like any other. Proof that the strategy of its leader to soften its image by removing party hardliners has worked. Certain members who were very unruly and behaved badly have now gone and as a result, French people today identify with the National Front and with what it has always been, a patriotic movement attached to the aspect of social rights and which at the same time has an unshakable will to defend national identity and of course French sovereignty. Its tone may have changed, but its policies have not. When security breaks down, those living in safe areas have the means to protect themselves. But the most vulnerable, the working classes, have to bear the brunt of this insecurity, this immigration, this rise in taxes, this unfair international competition. And I think that we are the only ones today who can offer a message of hope and policies to protect the poor. In a climate of rising job insecurity, more and more people could be tempted to look for easy answers, even if that answer is the wrong one. The extreme right party in France is proving increasingly popular among the working class and the unemployed who feel abandoned by the left. Critics accuse the National Front of playing on people's fears. But opinion polls crediting the party with 16% of votes in next year's local elections seem to suggest it's the only party that is actually listening. I'm Christina Rochello for JN1 in Paris.